Good morning. I'm Ray Alino. I am a full-time faculty member of the Computer Science Department of Ateneo de Davao University. I am here to present my research entitled A Learning Model to Classify Invasive Species in the Philippines Using Computer Vision. Let me now share with you my PowerPoint presentation. A learning model to classify invasive species in the Philippines using computer vision. Invasive alien species are animals, plants, and other organisms whose introduction or spread outside of their natural distribution threatens biological diversity. They cause economic and envi environmental problems. They disrupt native species by introducing disease, preying on them and taking up their space, food, and other resources. The native species lose their natural habitat and food, which can lead to their distinction. Invasive alien species are one of the greatest threats to biodiversity. This is the outline of my presentation. First, I'm going to present my data set. Then, I'm going to present how the CNN model was trained. And then, we're going to look at how the model is being confused by looking at the confusion matrix and the classification report. Lastly, we're going to look at the deployment of the model online. Prior to this study, there was no known publicly accessible image data set of invasive species in the Philippines. So, Part of the objective of this study is to develop a data set of invasive species in the Philippines. So in this data set, we have 24 invasive species. This is by no means comprehensive as there are more than 24 invasive species in the Philippines. So the initial images for this data set were sourced from the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity and supplemented by images from the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the Global Invas Invasive Species Database, the Global Bioinformation Facility, and also images from, from Google Images. All these images were carefully collected and curated and validated by, by a biodiversity expert. At the start, we split the data set of 2,581 images into five folds. In this way, every run will have a fold that's a part of the testing set or the validation set. And across all runs, the whole data set is represented as uh, the validation set. Model training and validation. These are the software and hardware that we use in training our CNN model. PyTorch machine learning framework, Anaconda data science package, TensorBoard charts, Jupyter notebook, and all these are running under Ubuntu Linux. We, our hardware is a desktop unit with an Intel i5 CPU with 48 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti GPU with eight gigabytes of RAM. We recorded metrics such as model size, training time, accuracy, precision, recall, 
and F1 score. These are the average metrics for the for the runs across the five folds. So the model size is 28.5 MB. So this is actually uh, constant because uh, because of the framework use, because PyTorch takes care of uh, managing the loading and saving of the model. And then the median, the median training time with the GPU is 3 minutes 51 seconds. The training time would increase approximately five, five times if you do not have a graphics card. So a graphics card is really very helpful. The overall accuracy for DenseNet, our CNN model, is at 86.2%. We also recorded macro and weighted accuracy metrics. Macro metrics refer to metrics that are not weighted. So for macro precision, we have 86.8%. Macro recall, 84%. Macro F1 score, 84%. And for weighted, we have Precision, 87%. Recall, 85.8%. And F1 score, 85.8%. So as we can see, with an overall accuracy of 86.2%, the model can indeed accurately classify the, the 24 classes in our IAS data set. We also looked at the confusion matrix of the model on the on the validation set, which is actually uh, the, the entire data set because this is an aggregated confusion matrix. So looking at the confusion matrix, we we can see that the classes that have similarities are being confused with with each other for example class classes 20 and 21 which are the rat classes are being confused for each other so class 20 is ratus exulans and it has 17 false negatives mistaken for class 21. So 17 instances of Ratus Exulans is uh, being confused as Ratus Tanizumi, class 21. And Ratus Tanizumi is also being confused, 12 instances of it, as Ratus Exulans. So this is also true for the other classes that have, that have classes that are similar. For example, the ant classes classes 13 and 15, as well as the other classes, but uh, to, to varying levels of confusion. So to what do we attribute this confusion? The main factor for this confusion is the clarity of the images. So if the images are clearly differentiated from each other, then the model will have uh, better accuracy on those classes. So for example, the frog classes are also rather similar classes, but the, the, the images in these classes are, are clearly differentiated from each other. Whereas the rat classes, for example, the images of the, the ratus exulans, for example, are very similar to the images of the the other rat, Ratus Tanizumi. If we look at the per class accuracy metrics, we also see this observation of classes that are similar being confused with each other. So if we look at the accuracy for classes 9, 20 and 21, for example, the, rat, the rats, so we have only 65% recall 
for class 20 and 53.2 percent for for ratus tanizumi whereas class 1 which is the squirrel which is a class that does not have any similar class its recall is at 97.5 its precision is at 93.6 percent so clearly classes with no similar class classes in the in the data set are performing very well whereas the classes that that have other classes that are similar to it are being confused with each other so we choose the best model for deployment by this we mean the the best run and then deploy this model. So we then replicated our local setup into a GitHub repository and linked this GitHub repository with a Streamlit cloud application. So the, the prototype, the proof of concept, the proof of concept deployment is accessible at invasive-pc-ph-streamlit.app. So, so I will now uh, do a short demo of the model deployment. But first, so let me give you a summary. So in summary, we developed an invasive alien species data set, particularly for the Philippines. And then we trained a CNN model on this data set. We recorded accuracy metrics, and then we deployed the model online. So what are the possible next steps? We want to grow the data set with, with real-world images. We, we will do more experiments, and we want to deploy the model on multiple platforms. So uh, let us now go to the, the model deployment demo. But before that, let's do a quick parade of the invasive species data set. So this is the first class. This is a Finlayson squirrel. This is the water hyacinth. This is the greenhouse frog. This is the mosquito fish. This is the palakang bukid, the Chinese edible frog. This is the green paddy frog. This is the banded bullfrog or the Asian painted frog. This is the giant African land snail. This is the house mouse. This is the coconut mealybug. This is the Nile tilapia the jaguar guapote, the longhorn crazy ant, the Chinese softshell turtle, the big-headed ant, the giant earthworm, the bell jellyfish, the golden kohol, the janitor fish, the Polynesian rat, the Asian house rat, the cane toad, palakang tubo, the rice black bug, and lastly, the red-eared slider. So if we go to the... URL for the application. So this is it. And if we upload an image and then run the, the model on the image, it will give you the top prediction for the image you uploaded. So for example, the squirrel is predicted as indeed the squirrel at 99.99% accuracy. If we choose another invasive species, so for example, if we choose this one, so this is a labeled as a uh, Rogulosus. So this is, I think, the Palakang Bukid. So if we run the model on this image, we see that the top prediction is indeed the Palakang Bukid at 99.87%. Let's try another one. So for example, if we chose... Uh, for example, the water hyacinth, this is a plant. And then run the model in the image. Indeed, uh, it was uh, predicted as the water hyacinth at 100%. So you may access this deployment of the model at, again, invasive-species-ph.streamlit.app.
that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. <laughs>